good afternoon and welcome to another Reliability Roadmap uh, web workshop. My name is Terrence O'Hanlon. I'm the publisher for Reliability Web and Uptime Magazine. It's my pleasure to be your host and moderator for today. Today's webinar topic is PASS 55, an introduction to the Asset Management Standard by James Nesbitt, Principal Service Delivery of the Asset Performance Group. And it's our pleasure to uh, have him here today. Uh, before we start, we just want to remind you to request your free subscription to Uptime Magazine. Uptime actually carried an article on PASS 55 almost two years ago by John Woodhouse when the concept was uh, just starting to become rolled out across North America. So please request your free subscription by going online at www.uptimemagazine.com. One more invitation before we get started. We want to invite you to consider attending Reliability 2.0 April 20th through 22nd in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I'm just going to take a wild guess and guess it's a little warmer in Fort Lauderdale than it is where many of you are calling in from. Um, the our Reliability 2.0 features RCM 2010, the Reliability Center Maintenance Managers Forum, RCA 2010, a root cause analysis symposium, EAM 2010, Enterprise Asset Management Summit with its own dedicated bonus track for SAP plant maintenance, and a bonus PASS 55 conference being held on April 19th. So if you want to get an intensive day on PASS 55, consider coming down. More details are at maintenanceconference.com. Um, uh, now, before we get started, I wanted to give um, James a chance to know who um, is on this call. So if you take a moment, please indicate your involvement in PASS 55. Just select one of the choices that you either did not know about it prior to this webinar, you would heard about it but don't know too much about it, uh, that you are currently following PASS 55 as an asset management specification, or that you're currently certified for PASS 55. We're just going to give it a few moments and this will help James uh, know to what level he needs to present to. And we're going to give it five more seconds so we can get to James. And I think there we've leveled off. All right, James, we have uh, 72 people on and 87% of them um, indicated uh, what their involvement is with PASS 55. And so on this webinar, 24% really didn't know much about PASS 55 prior to us doing this. 71% uh, had heard about it but didn't know too much more. 5% uh, are um, uh, following PASS 55 as an asset management specification. And no one on this call is currently uh, certified to PASS 55. All right, two more. Bear with me, guys. Uh, do you think that your organization could benefit from following an asset management specification? Just take a moment and give us an indication. Got three questions in total, and we won't hold it up too much longer. All right, terrific. We got just about everybody there. I'm going to close that poll. Um, and let's see. 97% think they could benefit from it, James, and 3% uh, don't think that they could. So you're going to have to reach that 3% while we're, uh, while we're on here. And uh, one last one. What systems are used to manage assets in your organizations? Do you use a computerized maintenance? You can check all of them that apply. Do you use a CMMS, which is generally considered a standalone maintenance management system, an enterprise asset management system that's tied into your accounting and purchasing? Do you use asset performance management, such as uh, systems like Avara or Meridium? Or do you use asset health management, uh, systems like Emerson or, or uh, Team from Allied or 24-7? Um, what type of systems are used in your facility or your organization? And we're just going to give it about five more seconds. And I think it's leveled out there. Five, four, three, two, one. Oops, pushed the wrong button. We'll close that. And uh, James, 62% have uh, CMMS, 59% EAM, 30% are using some sort of asset performance management system. Pretty interesting. 23% um, are using some sort of asset health management system to know uh, what's going on as far as that goes. So now, without any further ado, it's my pleasure to hand the presentation baton over to James. You should have a dialog box that says show your screen. 
I do. Can you see my can you see my screen? You're just coming up and now we see you and you just need to go to slideshow view and we're good. There you go. Perfect. All right. Thanks, Terry. Um, that was a very interesting poll, and it sounds like from the people that uh, that responded to the first question that our topic will be right on on an introduction to PAS 55. Um, just to get started, I, I'm a principal at the Asset Performance Group, or APG as we call ourselves for short. Um, APG was founded in 2003 by reliability experts who are focused on solutions rather than any specific process practice or technology. Um, our focus is asset care. And our footprint, of course, is the PAS 55 asset management footprint. Um, we're members of the Aladon Global Network for RCM2, um, partners with Ivara and, and EMA, and very involved in both SMRP and, and the Institute of Asset Management. And I'll talk about the Institute of Asset Management in a little bit more detail. So what is the publicly available specification, the PAS? This, this specification was really led by the Institute of Asset Management and partnered with the British Standards Institute. So the Institute of Asset Management built the, built the body of knowledge, uh, assembled the panels, built the, built the structure for the specification, and that structure is, and that specification, pardon me, is managed and distributed by the British Standards Institute. Um, the PASS is a specification, it's not a standard. So I, I believe even our introduction, I accidentally put that it was a standard. It's a specification, not a standard. The Institute of Asset Management. The Institute of Asset Management is an independent, non-for-profit membership organization. Their core interest is promoting the excellence in asset management, and, and the PAS 55 specification is core to that offering. There's often comparisons made between the Institute of Asset Management and the SMRP organization in North America. The Institute of Asset Management, by the way, is, is headquartered and, and, and centered in the United Kingdom. Um, and although compared to SMRP, processes and most of, most of their Thing. So there wasn't there wasn't a great benefit in bringing the two organizations interested in reliability. Getting access to both of the organizations can provide a wealth of knowledge. It was first published in May two thousand and four. Um, there were. A Hey, James? Hello? Yeah, you're, you're cutting in and out. Uh, your audio's cutting in and out. Okay. I don't know if you're moving something or what, but it's just, it's just you're going blank for a few seconds. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll adjust the headset. Is that any better, Terry? Yeah, that sounds great. Okay. Um, where was I? Okay. Now you're cutting out again. Um, how's that? There's, that's better. Okay. First published in 2004. 2006 included the introduction of the assessment methodology. So by becoming a member of the Institute of Asset Management, you have access to the assessment methodology as well as some other support materials such as the competency framework. Um, 2007 saw the Ofgem requirement. The Ofgem requirement was really a UK requirement for the Office of Gas and Electricity Markets. And then the current version is PAS 55-1. 2008, which includes updates and feedback from 50 organizations, and you can see here there was 1,300 suggestions that were incorporated into the specification. So what is asset management? Asset management is defined as the systematic and coordinated activities and practices through which an organization optimally and sustainably manages its assets and asset systems. 
What this is trying to say is, is there a structured, repeatable, sustainable approach to asset management? Is asset management seen as a strategic advantage in your organization? And given the focus uh, due to it in order to, in order to sustain the physical asset, managements, it, physical asset management that drive your business. What is it not? Uh, asset management is often confused as being a maintenance initiative and, and involving only the maintenance department. Although maintenance has a large role in it, we at APG call, call asset management the asset care function. And not to, not to confuse the asset care function with the maintenance department. It involves all levels of the organization. So in order to be successful, senior management needs to set forth budgets and align the goals of the organization with the performance of the asset, asset care function. Operations is integral and must provide input on the performance and health of the equipment base and further develop the performance standards required to meet their targets. Engineering must design and then throughout the life cycle of the equipment um, determine the, the correct maintenance acquisition and disposal of the equipment. Uh, maintenance, of course, must execute the work, and unions and human resources must establish incentive and performance measurement, as well as buy-in and, and commitment to the to the process. So, if we work this backwards, um, just take a look at the framework. Um, identify, identifying failing conditions and reporting them to the organization before the failure affects our operations. Being proactive in our in the care of our assets, both operationally and, and, and from a maintenance perspective. Planning the work, identifying resources, materials, tools, and procedures, and prerequisites to maximize wrench time and operational efficiency. Scheduling the work, identifying prerequisites, including getting and delivering of materials to the job site, positions of people. This also includes scheduling of the operation runs, ensuring that the silos that often exist between operations and maintenance are removed, and all departments are working towards a common goal that includes the successful execution of your organization's production and maintenance requirements. Execution doing it, performing the work, including the resources, needed skills, the interaction and communication of work that needs to be done, as well as the progress and modifications between operations and maintenance staff. The correct operational procedures and an understanding of the equipment performance standards and limitations. And of course, follow-up, refinement of the job plan, continuous improvement, notice for found work, material requirements, or even anti-requirements uh, found when performing the work changes to procedures and operating variables. So we move into the improve cycle. Here's where we really see the incorporation of asset management into the asset care function. Starting with measure, establishing and putting in place a structured approach for determining the current performance of the equipment base. Where are we and where are our opportunities to improve? Analysis, benchmarking the performance of the equipment against standards both in your organization as well as within the industry. Uh, measuring such factors as OEE and maintenance cost, operating procedure and strategy change. Moving up to focus, establishing the root of the problem, perhaps applying the Puerto principle where 80% of 80% of the benefit can be addressed by by addressing or can be realized by addressing 20% of the problem. Avoid broad, broad brushing the problem. The more succinct the prob a problem is identified, the more effective the solution will be. Part of this process includes what's the right improvement strategy for mitigating the identified program problem. Pardon me. Do we need to do an FMEA? Is it a redesign? Do we need to take a look at perhaps uh, Six Sigma or or, or uh, lean waste removal processes? And then finally, improve, perform and implement the improvement practice, developing the plan or improving the performance of the assets. Align. Align and define. This is the, the strategic component of the asset care function. Determining the performance required for the maintenance function. Identifying the opportunity to increase the reliability or reduce costs. Address regulatory safety or environmental requirements. Fund the effort takes the goals of the organization and puts them into action. The FINE establishes the reliability roadmap to ensure that it meets the needs of the organization, continuously acid testing the plan against the changes that occur both in the market and in the plan itself around resources for approach. So the obvious question, why do we need a specification? 
the past 55 standard or specification has, a, has large benefits in creating a roadmap for improvement and helps you understand how all the components will fit into the big picture. The standard does not tell you how to perform various components or who should be responsible in what role, but rather what the components are and how they interact with each other, as well as it defines the support and management structure needed to maintain, measure, and improve the asset management function. The PASS 55 specification is a top-down approach to asset management. This starts with an understanding of the organizational goals and determining the best maintenance strategy from there. Although on the surface this seems fairly intuitive, shouldn't the goal of every organization be to run the equipment at the highest efficiency at the lowest cost? Although at the core this may be true, however we need to understand the detail of the business model that the organization is constrained or enabled by. Variables such as market conditions, cash flow, redundancy, customer service level agreements, penalties, acquisitions, and purchase all play a part in the organization's direction and influence greatly what they will expect to get from their assets and subsequently will drive what will become the best maintenance strategy for that organization. Determining the asset management portfolio. Now many organizations have a broad number of businesses or a discrete functions within their business or site. For example, a power generation company may have a number of different fuel type plants, nuclear coal, combined cycle gas, wind or hydro. These businesses, although each under the power generation umbrella, all have different business expectations, market strategy, and value to the organization. For example, the coal generation sites may need a high degree of reliability and structure in order to avoid penalties for interruption of service or if their peaker units to be available when the market conditions are priced is most advantageous to your company. However, the wind generation may be less critical. The primary reason for the investment in wind may, to, may have been to increase public perception in the development of green energy. Its organization can make up any losses from wind generation using additional capacity from the other plants, then the way you want to maintain and operate this equipment will be different. This can also occur inside a single plant. The obvious example is the nuclear power plant, where you have the NSSS systems, the nuclear steam and safety systems, that will have a higher expectation around reliability, safety, and environment than would the balance of plant. In this example, both the NSSS and the balance of plant would be separate systems with, with separate policies for management. It is essential that the PASS 55, in the PAS55 process that these differences be understood and that the boundaries between the assets and the expectations put upon them are clearly defined. Within the asset portfolio, there are a number of systems that need to be managed. These systems will run the spectrum from critical to redundant to superfluous. Understanding the importance and the required function of the asset systems is essential to ensure that they are operated and maintained within the required boundaries. These systems will fail in a number of categories, safety, operational, single point vulnerability, and on and on, based on your business as well as, as the responsibility structure put around the assets. Finally, the asset ma the manage, manage assets level. How does your organization manage the life cycle activities associated to the acquisition, use, maintenance, and disposal of the assets? Is it structured and well defined? Or are you in a highly reactive environment that, has, that is in a firefighting mode and the equipment is actually managing you? PASS 55 aims to ensure that you have the right structure to manage your assets at each level of the management pyramid. And if we look at the bottom three uh, levels within that pyramid, that's called a PASS 55 asset management system. And we're going to get into that into some detail. Key principles for, for success. PASS 55 takes an integrated approach to physical asset management. The goal of the, of, the, of the specification is to produce a structured, sustainable model for managing physical assets in your organization. There is an understanding that one size does not fit all, and that based on the objectives of your organization, not all practices may be applicable or even valuable. PASS 55 recognizes this and provides a framework for what should be done, not how to do it, and defines good practices to follow. However, these practices may or may not be best for your organization in its current environment, and there is understanding and latitude that different organizations may need to perform the asset management function differently. 
So let's take a look at the asset management system in some detail. This illustration shows the elements of the system, policy, strategy, objectives, and asset management plans. As we've already talked about, this is, this is a top ground down approach. There must be an organizational strategic plan. All other elements will leverage this for direction for the care and operation of the physical assets. So we need, we need a road map. We need a direction. Policies. Policies give you the guidelines for asset management. How will you manage the equipment? What are the policies relative to safety, environment, and, and reliability? What are the policies concerning contractors, capital investment, maintenance and operation of the equipment, training and skills development of your employees, or even contractors? These policies need to be structured and smart. Smart meaning specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time bound. They must be consistent within the organization. They must, and of course, comply with any legislation, regulation, or statutory requirements. They must be documented, implemented, sustained, and communicated. And this is where I've seen it fall down over and over again. Um, in my past, I worked for a large uh, natural gas transmission company, and we became ISO certified. And we had all of our specifications, all of our process flow diagrams, all of our roles and responsibilities all charted out and very well documented. We kept it in a file cabinet. And the only time anybody ever looked at it was when the ISO, ISO auditor came by and we opened up the cabinet and there was everything that he needed to, to recertify us. Um, the past 55 specification takes a different approach in that it must be part of the organization, a living program. It must also include a commitment to continual improvement. It's not just a documentation of what you're doing today. The asset management strategy. But this details how the organization will obtain the asset management policies and contribute to the overall goals of the organization. What tools will be used? What training uh, and change management is required to enable the organization to become successful? The strategy must enable the objectives. Where are we going? What are we trying to achieve? Why are we going down this path? And be consistent with the asset management policies. Consider all the stakeholders of the equipment. Again, this is not just a maintenance function, or not just a maintenance and operations function. Leverage a life cycle approach to managing the assets. You must consider risk and, of course, be part of a living program. The objectives. The objectives in the, uh, in the past 55 specification outline what the organization is trying to achieve. They must be measurable, of course. They must be communicated throughout the organization. And ultimately, they should be part of the incentive program. Be reviewed and updated in order to remain relevant. And consider the opportunity associated with improvement. We're not, our objectives aren't just to do what we're doing today. They're to improve. And, and you need to consider what tools and practices you're putting in place and what the perceived benefit of that will be. The asset management plans are, are the what and form the basis of your improvement and sustainment effort. This is where the rubber hits the shop floor. What does your organization expect from each asset and asset system? How will they be utilized and maintained? What is the cap capital replacement strategy for these assets? Can they perform at the level you need in order to meet your goals? Can the equipment physically do it? What are the actions required in order to meet these requirements? Who is accountable for form and at what frequency? How are we going to measure success? Does the plan consider the risk of each component and system? Is there adequate avoidance and mitigation strategy in place? Are the plans both technically feasible and financially responsible? Is it physically possible to, to perform what we're, what we're suggesting? And does the business case make sense? Do the plans have support of the asset owners? operators and maintainers? Are there clear accountabilities and well-defined roles? Do, do people bought into the process or are we just getting some head nodding? Are there contingency plans in place? How will the organization respond to emergencies or loss of asset functions? Is there a clear spare strategy? Is there a clear understanding of the asset's consequences and the steps needed to, to be taken to preserve safety, the environment, and the needs of the organization? Are these plans understood, communicate, communicated, and periodically reviewed? 
And finally, the portfolio of assets. All of the elements are applied to a specific portfolio of assets. This portfolio is managed using a life cycle approach and considers the standards, processes, maintenance and operations procedures are in place, as well as acquisitions and disposal strategy. PASS 55 also understands the need for enablers and controls. So below the plan, proper practices like Six Sigma, Lean, RCM, and FMEA need to be considered as well as a structured risk identification model to enable your organization to focus your, your effort on those components and functions that contribute the most. And you'll find that throughout the PASS 55 specification, at each of the element levels, there is, there is a focus on risk. Processes are needed that outline the roles and responsibilities of the people involved in the asset management function, as well as the technology that will be used to support and enhance the effort needs to be considered. These processes need to be supported with the employee skills, and assess employee skills assessment and training plans. Long and short term plans need to be put in place to implement and support the process changes and ensure that the people responsible have the skills required to be successful. The best laid plans are of little value unless there is a clear effort to implement. Implementation, performance measurement, and tracking of results are integral to the PASS 55 specification. With implementation, the organization's commitment to monitor and look for opportunities to continually improve. The management of physical assets is not a project. That means it doesn't have a distinct beginning and end. Rather, it is a living program and requires effort both to sustain as well as, as, well as improve. Your portfolio of assets and individual of systems and individual assets. The optimization of asset management activities considers each task on its own worth doing. Does it effectively mitigate the consequence of failure? Is it is it risk appropriate? Does the organization even understand the risk associated to those assets and systems? Are there ways to leverage the program to perform at a lower cost? Is there any opportunity to leverage economy of scale or similar assets across multiple locations, either in the same plant or at different sites. Now this slide, in, in my mind, represents a powerful concept within PASS 55, and that is that asset management is not a silo unto itself. In order to be successful, the organization must consider and respond to many variables. Human drivers, this is perhaps the most difficult component to overcome how to motivate and drive the need for change, create an understanding and buy-in for the need to, to proactively manage the physical asset base and avoid slipping back into the way things have always been done, back into our comfort zones. Information drivers. Can we get the information out of our current systems in order to manage the assets? If not, what do we need to change in order to implement or allow us to have access to the information that will drive the business uh, decisions? Financial drivers. Life cycle costing and capital investments are a few of the components, but one must also consider the current state of the assets. Are they in a maintainable operational state? Are there sufficient resources and commitment to renew or replace the equipment in order to ensure that you can meet your asset management goals? Or are we always trying to push as much as we can out of the assets with little regard for its capability? Intangible drivers. How will your organization be perceived by the community, your employees, and, and, and your customers? So what's the first step? The Institute of Asset Management has developed a comprehensive assessment guideline for physical asset management. This guideline is available to all members. It's called the, the PAM, the Physical Asset Management Guidelines. The PAM, as it is known, can be used to determine where your organization is strong and where there are opportunities to improve. The assessment has 121 question and questions and aims to assess each of the elements of the specification, allowing you to build a roadmap for improvement or even a roadmap for certification. The Institute of Asset Management is now qualifying and endorsing competent assessors around the world. These assessors will have to meet quality standards developed by the Institute of Asset Management, as well as have access to a, ri a rich support structure to ensure that the assessment is both fair and consistent. Um, as it stands now, without the, uh, they're calling the endorsed assessor program, there are no real controls on who is assessed and, and, and to what, what, 
what standard they're being assessed at. Um, by March of this year, the the endorsed assessor program will be in place, and we'll start to see a, a supported, consistent process being rolled out in the industry. The assessment can be valuable on its own to identify where or where the organization may need to improve. Additional value may be gained by understanding the financial impact of improving the asset management function. At APG, we quantify benefit in these terms, cost, opportunity, return, and effort. We advise our customers that although there is value in becoming certified as compliant to the PASS 55 guideline, there is often more immediate value in pursuing the initiatives that will create returns to the organization right now. Often there is low-hanging fruit such as increased equipment uptime, formalized consistent business processes, or reduced overall cost of maintenance or operations through optimization. Using PASS 55 as a roadmap and pursuing initiatives that will render a return to your organization is usually the right course for most organizations. Today there is no regulatory or other requirement that makes PASS 55 mandatory in any industry. So pursuing good practice should be focused on providing benefit to your organization. So this completes the, uh, the presentation uh, component of, of the webinar. We have completed, uh, we have uh, a number of other planned webinars that will dive into more detailed aspects of the past 55 specifications. And they're, they're available here and you'll be able to get them on the recording of this webinar as well as the reliabilityweb.com website and our APG Asset Care website. Excellent. Those look like um, fantastic. Um topics for the rest of the year keep us all motivated about past 55 James thank you do you have uh, do you have time for some um, questions absolutely all right great uh, first off I just want to thank everybody who's attending today we've got a really great um, attendance I think almost a hundred people here uh, which just shows the interest in past 55 um, you, you mentioned in the beginning that it doesn't tell you the who should be involved in asset management or even the how um, and, and you know, is that um, how do I even phrase that question? That it that it well, what does if it's not telling you the who and how? What's it What's it telling you again? Can you restate it? What it's What it's focused on telling you is what needs to be done. So, what does an organization need to have in place? What elements? What uh, What What elements need to be in place in order to support asset management? Things like having policies, having plans, having a clear organizational direction, having enablers um, such as such as practices and processes. All of those, all of those, past 55 goes into it goes into a lot of detail around. But it doesn't say that you have to do RCM2, for example, or that you should adopt a a Lean Six Sigma uh, uh, culture in in your organization. And it doesn't even say that that the reliability engineer should be accountable for this equipment or that you should have um, both component and system engineers in your organization because those are really things out of their control in a general specification. A lot of those things are really specific to industry in some case and specific plants in others. Well then, um, but it does talk about uh, measurement and improvement? Yes, it does talk about that, that, that measurement is the measuring where you are and where you're going and what your objectives are for asset management, including any new initiatives. So those new initiatives may be you know, uh, different operating procedures. They may be new tools. They may be new practices. Setting those objectives and continually tr striving to improve your operation. So a big part of the past 55 specification is not is not like a, a, a traditional ISO uh, ISO specification where it's document what you're doing and repeat what you're doing. It has, of course, an element of continuous improvement, and there must be a commitment for continuous improvement um, in the organization in order to comply with the past 55 specification. Um. To kind of a two-part standard, uh, two-part question: Is PASS 55 available as a standard document, like say RCMs JA 1011 or 1012? Yes, um, PASS 55 1 
2008 is available both from the British Standards Institute or from the, uh, the uh, um, IAM, the Institute of Asset Management. We'll, we'll follow up with everybody with some links to that also. Um, now we've heard talk that it's a, so the Institute of Asset Management developed this as, a, as in essence a global asset management specification. They passed it, or they worked in cooperation as you said with the British Standards Institute to create the document that's now available. We've heard that there is a, uh, a movement afoot to have this be um, adopted by ISO to, to turn it from a specification into a standard. Is that so? Do you know anything about that? Yes. Um, so, so that's exactly where it's going now. And uh, I was talking to the Institute of Asset Management about a week ago. And if you go to their website, which is um, IAM.com, I believe, or just search for Institute it's, of it's Asset actually, Management. It's actually, it's, T, it's T-H-E, like the, IAM.org, the IAM.org. Okay. Yeah, OK, there it is right there on the front of their, front of their brochure. Yes, you're right. Um, um, when I was when I was when I was when I was uh, surfing there the other the other week, what I found is that it looks like the past 55 specification is going to form the basis for the ISO specification going forward, and the initial meetings to start to to start to build the ISO specification using the past 55 framework are are being initiated. I believe they're starting in London uh, in in the March time frame. Excellent. Um, well, we're real excited about hosting the Past 55 Conference Center Fort Lauderdale, and hoping we, you know, we've gotten a lot of interest in it, and we hope we get a lot of interesting participation. Um, can you um, uh, use, you know, e, you know, does it help to have a good EAM or uh, or asset performance management or asset health management system to to, to accomplish the aims of Past 55? Is it does it or does that even relate? Well, well, it certainly does relate. So when we take a look at things like developing the plans for improved asset management, so there there will be some component of FMEA in there, whether it's RCM or preventative maintenance optimization, and that data needs to be needs to be managed and it needs to be part of the living program and it needs to be benchmarked and more importantly than that it needs to be implemented. So as you start to go down the path we always caution our customers that yeah we can get started we can get a lot of the benefit by by using your existing systems but at some point managing the data becomes too difficult becomes too consuming so what if, if we don't put in a put, don't put in a some sort of electronic system to manage it, it begins to degrade and people lose faith in it or it doesn't get implemented. So there is a point where some sort of data management system around the reliability plans is essential. Who, who inside the organization should be the driver of PASS 55? Is it a reliability driven effort? Is it usually you know somebody who's in charge of corporate reliability? Ideally I'd like to see it be a corporately driven uh, a program, not one that comes from the maintenance department, um, um, but one that comes from corporate. I have seen I have seen them be very successful when they've come from corporate. I've seen them be be successful when they're operations driven in a manufacturing environment. But whenever it's whenever it is maintenance driven or even engineering driven, there's a lot of uphill selling that has to be done to the rest of the organization in order to get their participation and buy-in. So it's always much better to come from the top of the organization and be aligned to the organizational goals. Uh, I'm not sure if this uh, this is a comment just on top of that question. I'm not sure how relative it is. Is that we've seen um, the benefit of Pass 55 with a global uh, utility company that's in the power generation, and as James mentioned, they had all types of fuels and different uh, power generation capacity. What they liked about it is it gave them a common definition. These elements that were laid out in Pass 55 gave them a common uh, definition across their whole fleet. So they they um, were able to even just use it internally to to make comparisons as far as performance was uh, was concerned. So from a from a corporate standpoint, that was what their interest was at that point in time. Um, that that's an excellent comment. Just having a common common language and understanding of of what the organization is is talking about or what their expectations are can sometimes be huge. 
Can you repeat what you said because you were cutting out and several people are very interested in your in, in your position and the information you were you were deploying about um, there's SMRP, the Society for Maintenance and Reliability Professionals here in the United States and going global, and then there's IAM in Britain also with a global reach. How do those two um, relate and compare to each other? Well, as to the SMRP and the Institute for Asset Management, um, I was talking to David some, some time ago, and he said that there was a movement afoot for perhaps those two organizations to merge. And what they had found is that, that uh, rather than what they both expected, they have a lot of overlay or commonality within their offerings. What they found was that they were more complementary to each other, and we're, and we're both looking at different areas of, of, of asset management. So rather than combine it, they've said, well, we, we should be complementary to each other, and we'll continue to go down each other, down our own paths. And there's very little overlay within, within the, the activities of the SMRP and the activities of the Institute of Asset Management. I happen to be a member of both. I don't know about you, James. I think your original slide showed your organization supports both organizations. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we get different value from from both the organizations. The um, uh, several people are asking about the slides, and what I'm, I'm going to say two things about them. One is that within a couple of hours from this presentation, you'll get a, a link to the recorded uh, presentation here. Everything that's going on now, including these questions and answers, will be recorded and will be uploaded, and you'll have access to them in an email with a link in a few hours here. Um, James, if I uh, send them your email address, can they can they request the slides directly from you? Absolutely. Maybe put them in a PDF so they're not 25 meg or something like that. Uh, yeah. And uh, bring the size down a little bit um, so you can email them. Uh, yeah, so I'll PDF them for sure. All right. I'll, so I'll put, that, I'll put that in the follow-up email. So, so in answer to everybody's questions who's requesting the slides, within three hours you'll get a link to the recorded workshop. And we, what we really recommend you do with that, let your coworkers, let other stakeholders within your industry and within your company come up and watch this recorded presentation. Um, and then uh, you can also uh, take the email that's in this follow-up and send it back to James and say, hey, you said you'd send me the slides, please do. And ask James any follow-on questions that you want also. Although we're going to cover a lot of this throughout the year, you're free to ask him now. Um, hey, how, how, do you, how do you think we can get an organization driven to the past 55? Are there some... Are there some business cases? Are there some justifications? Are there? How, how do we start the conversation internally to even get a, to even get people driving towards the specification? Well, in my in my opinion, the, the the real value initially is to give you a roadmap as to how all of these initiatives fit together from a from a reliability from an asset management perspective. So, if you could start to look at the past fifty five specification and arrange your, or, arrange your organization so you, can, so you can start to measure where there may be strengths and opportunities. Um, there are um, endorsed assessors, once, once, once you're ready for them, that will come in and, and assess your organization against the past 55 specification. From there, as we said, you should build a road map that says, okay, well, where can I get benefit right now on my journey, if you will, down to, to, towards past 55 certification. So we look at certification as as targeting those areas that are going to give you immediate return. And by doing that, you start to build some internal support for the process and the specification as well. People start to come on board. This is a good thing to do. It's, uh, it, it's, it's, it makes good common sense, and people can see a benefit of putting effort into it. Can this be driven by a reliability professional inside an organization? It certainly can be. It certainly can be. The difficulty that they have, of course, is selling up in the organization and getting buy-in and participation from the other groups. I have seen it success successful. Um, um, I'm not. I'm not going to dissuade somebody from doing it, but. Uh, but uh, I have, there is some level of, of upward selling that has, that has to occur. The risk that you have really is doing this in a silo or doing this in a, in a, in a, in a vacuum without the support and buy-in from the rest of the organization. And without that support and buy-in, it's going to be very, very difficult to realize the benefit. But if you're a reliability professional who thinks that they can get that support and, 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 and communicate that to the rest of the organization, then by all means it can be driven from the reliability group.
Well, absolutely super. Um, James, a fantastic uh, presentation. Um, oh, wait a second. Another question. Uh, sorry, just popped up here. Okay. The, the concept of the asset model, um, such as uh, you know, metadata model or asset registry, et cetera, that's uh, wow. Okay, is it exactly? Uh, that's, I think where he's going there is is how do I define the boundaries of the system? Right, right, and it's really um, you're obviously going to use the tools that are available to you. So if you have a CMMS with a with a hierarchy or a, or a master equipment list in it, that's where you're going to start. But what we're really looking for when we're when we're defining the the portfolio or the boundaries around the system is what assets are going to be managed differently from other assets? Win versus nuclear, or, or NSSS systems versus balance of plant. Where am I going to set different policies, different objectives, and different strategy for those, for those components compared to, or those assets compared to others? Often I've seen reliability programs, and, and the, the company I used to work for in Canada, the, the, the gas transmission company, they did a very good job of managing their, their, their assets in that environment. It was a highly regulated rate of return environment. Then they started to acquire power generation, and they started to acquire some risk of service oil transportation in the United States. And they tried to apply the same maintenance policies strategies and objectives that they were using on their natural gas assets to those other businesses because that's just what they knew. And what they found is that, well, A, the market wouldn't handle it. The cost of their, them doing maintenance in a power generation or a risk of service environment just didn't, just didn't make financial sense. And the resources weren't available to be successful. So the resources that they had in the Canadian operations were, were far exceeded the resources that were available to them in a non-regulated, non-cost of service environment. So they needed to it took several years that they needed to start to think about managing their different businesses and different assets within those businesses differently. James, can I just buy these sta these specifications and and work on implementing them myself, or am I prohibited from doing so because I'm not certified? Nope. Anybody can buy the past fifty five. Um, specification from the Institute of Asset Management or from the British uh, British Standards Institute. So you can go there and, and put your credit card on and have it there the next the, the next week. Um, the, the caution there is of course avoiding some of the traps around it and and to some extent developing your own definition of the terms and trying to implement it based on your perception or staying within your box. There is a there is there is probably a need to get some outside help around around implementing PAS fifty five, both to be objective as well as to expedite your effort. But again, the first step should be assessment, and the assessment should should drive you as to where your opportunities are, and then you need to responsibly manage those in order to reach your goal. And sometimes that's going to include outside consultants, and I believe sometimes that's going to include just internal internal knowledge. Do you su suspect in the future there'll be jobs within large corporations who have a large asset fleet uh, called Pass 55 Manager? Well, I don't know if there'll be a Pass 55 Manager. I know right now we have asset owners, we have uh, asset reliability engineers, we have people who are responsible for for the asset base base in their organization. Within a nuclear power plant, you may be looking at system or component engineers that are responsible for those for those assets. I think likely what we will have is asset managers going forward, whether it be to PAS 55, the new ISO spec, or just good best practices in their industry. All right. Can you, well, one last question. Can you elaborate on the 120 plus questions in the assessment? In other words, give some examples. Uh, use a specific asset, say primer air and a fan uh, in a coal plant. Well, they're they're not looking at they're not looking at assets. Uh, specifically, they're looking at the elements within the process. Do you have a structured, repeatable process for determining the 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 risk justified maintenance program for your asset base? Do you have do you have um, um, 
business processes that, are, that, that have a clear understanding of accountability, responsibility, consulting, and inform. Is that communicated? Do people know about it? Is it followed? Is it ingrained in the culture? So we're not looking at specific equipment. Remember, it's not telling you how to do it. It's telling you what to do. Got it. Well, awesome. Well, again, I want to thank all the people who uh, came on board and gave us their time and attention, participated in the in the polls that helped to help to enlighten both uh, James and myself, and hopefully the the attendees as well. Um, want to really thank APG Asset Performance Group for uh, for putting this on. We're really looking forward to the next series. Uh, this is great. I think you've really generated some excitement for it's Fest 55. And come on down because they'll be there. APG will be at Reliability. 2.0. Uh, they're doing lots of different things down there, participating with us. And uh, if you want to know about Fast 55, one day, April 19th in uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and then stick around for the other three days, and you'll learn a lot about RCM and EAM and decision support systems and the lot. More information at maintenanceconference.com. James, thank you so much. Um, watch for a flood of emails, because I'm sure you're going to get a lot of requests for this PowerPoint. Thanks, Terry. Thanks for your help. All right. Have a great day. Bye, everybody. This is Terry O'Hanlon, Reliability Web and Uptime Magazine, signing off.